Hi, my name is Pam Denny. I'm the designer and architect of the Maximo BI or Business Intelligence Tools. Today's demo is part five in a series where we are exploring the ad hoc or QBR functionality in Maximo 7.6. In part one, we looked at the style tab. Part two was content. Part three was calculate. Part four was summarize. And today we're going to look at the format tab, which is made up of three key components filters or parameters, sorting and grouping, and it can greatly extend the types of ad hoc reports you can create. Before I do that, I want to highlight a few things. This demo series is intended to help you maximize your knowledge of QBR or ad hoc reporting in 7.6. In addition to this series, there's a number of other ad hoc and also BERT KPI and Cognos recordings available here on the Maximo Wiki page. And as I go through the demonstration today, I'm going to highlight this worksheet. I've highlighted this throughout the previous sessions and basically it's a worksheet or workbook with corresponding tabs for the ad hoc dialogue. So we have a tab on the style, content, calculate, etc. Here on the Format tab, there's a couple of key business rules and features that we want to highlight. For example, when we come to define a filter in our ad hoc reporting dialog, the filter is only available on any selected field from the parent object. We're going to be working in work order tracking, so that means that you have to first add the attribute in the Content tab before you can define it as a filter. In terms of grouping, again, you have to select the field, but it does not have to be on the parent object. It can be any object in the hierarchy, and the same holds true with sorting. So let's take a look at this. Well, we're going to go back and we're utilizing, again, the work order tracking application and that same query that I've been building upon, the work order backlog and BR location. And I've brought that up and I've done a few, th few things to get us started. On the content tab, I've added some additional fields from work order tracking. And also you can see as I navigate through the selected field section, there's a field added from the asset object. Asset, if you look over here, is a child object of work order details. I have our same calculate feature that we've had before, and on the summarize tab, I've added two summaries, one from the work order details where we're looking at average work priority, and another one from install date on asset, so you can see how that comes into play. When I preview my ad hoc report that I'm creating, we can see how this displays. Here's my selected attribute on the content tab. Over here is my calculation, my number of weeks overdue. And here's the two summaries that I've added. Work priority and install date from asset. But there's a few things that I might want to do with this. I, if I want to explore this information in detail, can see right away that it's not in any particular sorting, right? So I see a lot of different values. And that's really important to note that a sorting from the application that you may have defined in work order tracking does not pass to the QBR report. So we need to define what sort order we want. Also, I like to do groupings. When I look at, you know, these data. I just see so much data, I don't know where to start. So oftentimes I want to define myself what that grouping should be. And then we're also going to add some parameters. So let's go right to our Format tab. And again, this is similar to the Summarize tab in that there's no freeform entry. You have to utilize the lookups that are available for you. And I'm going to skip around a little bit, and I'm going to end with the, the filtering. And in this case, I'm going to start from the dialog on the bottom up. So I'm going to go from bottom to top. You don't have to do this, but I think it's a little bit more helpful to explain the feature. So let's look at sorting. Again, how do I want my records displayed? Well, for me, I really want to see the dates, right? I'm looking at a backlog. So I want to look at the scheduled start, and I want to look at that in terms of ascending order. That's most important to me. You know, what are my most overdue work orders? And then I want to look at it by priority, right? I have a work order priority here, I believe. Yep, right here. And again, that's really important. So I can focus on my oldest, most important work orders. Now when I click Preview, 
let's see what happens in the viewer when I apply that new sort order. Before I had a whole bunch of mixed up um, uh, scheduled start dates, but now look at this. It brings the data in so much more easily for me to interpret. You know, I see my oldest ones first. Well, here my priority, again, I'm looking at the oldest first, but I don't believe I have my right sort order, so I want to go back and check that. Um, and I actually want it in descending order of um, priority, so I'm going to just make that little change. The next thing I want to do is I want to do a grouping. Again, I look at this data. Oh, how do I analyze this? I have some nice figures up top, but I want to break it down. And what the way I want to break this down is I want to break it up by location, right? I'm in the BR location, but I've left that empty, right? I left it as BR, but what specific BR locations? Is it BR1, BR2, BR3, etc.? So let's, again, look and see what happens when we go from this to now we apply that single grouping and click Preview. So I'm going to take a simple listing report, quickly reformat it, and now I get segments of each of those groups. So I can see my specific data for location BR200 and BR210. The other really nice point about this is look at what happens with my summaries. My summaries for my overall report show up here, but then I have individual summaries for each of my groupings. So for location BR200, I can see what my average work priority is in the installation date. So really, really important information. And this helps me navigate so much quicker through the content so I can again focus on, all right, BR430 over here. This is my most overdue work order. I've got to focus on this, and it helps me break up the content. Well, as I was doing that, I really quickly showed you that lookup, but I didn't spend enough time on it, so let me bring that up again. When I come to either the grouping or sorting section, these again are all the available attributes that I can add in either the grouping or sorting section. As you can see here, everything has been added via the, the content tab. Here's all my, my um, parent object, and here's the specific attribute that I can select from. You cannot sort or group on a calculation. You can't do it on a summary. It has to be an attribute that was specifically added in the content tab. Now let's look and see what happens when we navigate up to filtering. When I click on filtering, I only see those attributes from my parent work order object. This is because you can only define a filter, which is also known as a parameter, on the parent object and you must select it from there. So what do I want to select? In this case, I want to bring in my work type. <clears throat> There's a, other, a few very critical points about this. When you define a, um, a filter, Oftentimes, people want to add either one value or multiple values. The default is a single parameter. Well, you can uncheck that to get multiple parameter values. And then I could continue to navigate, you know, on, in this particular case, maybe the person wanted to get um, a little bit more descriptive. And in addition to work order type, let's have him put in a status if he wants. And then you can continue. I'm going to leave that one as single to add additional parameter values. We've had um, some clients ask us why are we limiting to three filters, three grouping, and three sorting. We evaluated a number of reports. We talked to a number of clients. And it was determined that that was a really good level. If you start to get into multiple, multiple groupings and multiple, multiple sort, sorting, the information can get so convoluted. I'm not sure if that's the correct word, but you, you're not really sure what you're looking at, right? Because you have so much data sorted so many different ways and grouped so many different ways. It's just really confusing. So the values that we've come up with, again, are based on your am, input and research. And that's why we're utilizing those three values. 
Now one of the things that you're going to see before I hit the um, submit button here is that the filters are very different in 7.6 than they were in our previously 7.1 and 7.5 releases. In those earlier releases you could actually input a filter value when you're creating your ad hoc report. Well now in 7.6 you can define your filters when you create it but you're not going to see the filters until you actually execute and save the report. So let me show you what that looks like. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and run and save my completed report. Now when we do this it always takes longer. Why does it take longer when we save our report? Because we're taking our report design file that we've created and we're actually saving it to the database. We need to save it to the database so we can retrieve it when either you or other people will run it in the future um, and also so we can edit it. So it's taken again a little bit longer that first time and I'm just going to let it go and again this is what we saw before but I want to highlight one key thing and that's on the last page. In the very last page on the bottom here you're going to see the WHERE clause. Now this WHERE clause is my work order backlog WHERE clause that I applied from my application and we showed how you could do that in part one of the series with the style tab. But notice down here my runtime WHERE clause. That's blank and that's because even though I defined a filter I didn't input it at runtime. So when I run this now you're going to see a difference to how I actually put that value in. So let me close this down and now let me come over here and run a report. Now the report I want to run is my backlog report. Did I click that? can't see if I, uh, sorry about that. Um, I called it backlog so let me do a quick search. I'm back. And I'm going to run this report. And look what happens on a request page. There's our two filters or parameters we defined. My work type, I define this as a multiple parameter value so I can put in multiple values and my status is single. Neither one of these are required. If I don't input anything it's only going to run against that application query. Well let's put in EM and PM. I'm going to leave my status blank and click submit. <coughs> Excuse me. Now when my report executes it takes my application query and let's go to the very last page here and let's see what my filter is. The filter that I applied down here, my saved where clause, that's saved in the report design file, that's not going to change, but my runtime where clause is updated. I'm only looking at work orders that are EM or PM work orders. So I've done some additional filtering capability here. I believe my record set before made, might have been, oh, I could probably tell it right here from the work order tracking application, 119 records. And so I, I filtered out, you know, 10 records to come up to, again, just the EM and PM work orders that you see over here. So really powerful capability. Look what I've done in just a few minutes. I've created a grouped report. I've defined what the sorting is. I've got a calculation. I've got summaries really really powerful capability. I want to just show one last thing and that's um, if I come here and now let's imagine that I want to continue to work with those parameter values I've defined. Well let's come on over and let's go I should actually use my um, application up here new navigation and let's go to report administration and let's bring up that report that we just created with our format tab how do I do that quickly? Well I have a query set up for my ad hoc reports so I can bring up all those reports that I've created. Here's my work order backlog and let's look at this in report administration. A couple of things that you're going to see again new in Maximo 7.6 is we have applied or exposed the saved where clause in report administration so the admin can see exactly what that is. And that might be important if you apply preview limits which is um, you know w a mechanism that you can use to control what work order records people might be accessing. Well here's our two parameters that we just defined. How cool is that? Let's open up our work type parameter and let's say that you know um, I don't have a lookup, right? 
um, as you w when I look down the preview page and or the request page let me bring it up here if I click on the preview button there's there's no lookups and sometimes people want to look up well a lookup is added if the filter or parameter value is a date time but in this case it's not so let me just add the, the lookup name I happen to know its work type so I'm just gonna save that value if I click preview um, it's not gonna show the reason it doesn't show is I need to regenerate my XML. So let me close out of that dialog, come back here to Report Administration, generate my request pages. Excuse me, and this is going to go ahead and take that um, parameter lookup value that I defined and apply it to my ad hoc report. So now when I come in and I actually um, look at my work order backlog uh, report that I've created, it's complete. Let's open him up and report admin. I'm just going to execute him right here from report admin because he's here or I'm here. And now I have my work type. Click on the lookup and I would pick, you know, specifically whatever values I want. Um, you know, I could just come down here. I don't know. Um, let's filter on Eagle and A, make sure I get the right values. And I'm going to select again. I'm just, well, um, I was thinking which one I'll select. I'll just select EM Work Orders and click OK. And now click Submit. And now when my report executes, my dynamic query is going to be again different because I selected um, only emergency work orders. You can see it's significantly less than it was before. I only have two emergency work orders, which is really good. Um, here's my dynamic query. Here's my saved where, where clause. So again, tremendous, tremendous functionality that you can see with the format tab. You have the ability to define those parameter values that we saw over here with our um, work type and priority or work type and status lookup, excuse me. You have the ability to define the sort order and also the grouping. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your time.